Let's take a look at how the WhatsApp button module for Odoo websites works. The purpose of this module is to allow you to manage WhatsApp numbers and make them visible on the website according to certain criteria. The first important thing to clarify is that this module is compatible with both the enterprise and community versions of Odoo, and it is available in both English and Spanish. Currently, my instance is in English, but the module is fully translated. The first thing we need to do is register WhatsApp numbers. To do this, we go to the main window of the module and click on the new button. To register a number, the first thing we need to do is give it a name. We'll give it a name, which will be an internal name. Let's call it test1. Next, we'll enter the WhatsApp number. In this field, it's very important to remember that you need to include the country code for the WhatsApp number you're entering. For example, for the United States, it would be plus 1, for Colombia, plus 57, for Spain, plus 34, for Mexico, plus 52, and so on, according to each country's code. Let's use an example number. Let's say it's the code plus 1, and we'll enter the phone number like this. The next field we need to fill out is a default message field. When people click on the WhatsApp button, this is the message that will automatically appear as if it were about to be sent. So depending on the purpose we have for the number, we can enter a default text or message here. Next, there's something very important, which is the time zone. This time zone will allow us to determine the module's availability based on hours and days. So this time zone will be the reference time zone to consider when setting the availability condition by hours. So for example, let's carefully choose EEST, which is basically the Central European Summer Time Zone, a significant and widely recognized time standard. Okay? Oh, here we would have the convenient option to specify a particular text that would be prominently displayed on the button right next to the existing WhatsApp button, allowing for clear and immediate identification so that people can see it and click on it. Next, we would have the location of the button. The button can be on the right, on the left, or in the center. Let's say we're going to place it in the center. Then we'll be able to choose or set a color. Hmm, let's leave it green, which is the most standard. And then we'll be able to set the size of the button. The button can be small, medium, or large. Let's make it large. Next, in these options, what we can do is, if in our current setup we have several websites, we'll be able to determine on which websites it will be available. I'm going to enable it on both websites I have in this example instance, and then we'll also be able to select the languages. So let's say this instance only has one language, but here we'll be able to choose from however many languages we have configured in the instance. This is very useful if, for example, we have a site set up in two languages, say English and Spanish, or three languages, English, Spanish, and French. We could then have a WhatsApp number for each language, and that would allow us to provide specific and personalized support for visitors according to their language or based on their language. Here, we're going to choose English, which is the only language I have available. And then here, what we'll have is some information, which is the number of clicks that the WhatsApp link has received. For now, obviously, we have zero clicks. And here, we're going to define some criteria to determine when the button appears. Let's say the first criterion would be the language, but the second criterion could be, for example, availability by schedule, meaning a schedule of days and times. We can also set up URL exclusions specifying certain particular parts of the entire website where we definitely do not want the button to appear at all. If we have a URL where we don't want the button to appear, then we would put it here. And finally, we would have the location restriction, which at this point is very important to clarify that it will depend on the configuration of our system. For this to properly work as intended, we absolutely need to have geolocation fully enabled, and what we can then do is to carefully check if our current instance indeed has geolocation actively running. And to do that, we are simply going to click on this designated test button located right here. And as you can see, our server is correctly configured. That means we'll also be able to add restrictions by country. 
So what we see here is that by default, when I save for the first time and I haven't selected or defined any availability, it will assume that my system, that my WhatsApp button will be available from Sunday, sorry, from Monday to Sunday, from 0 Sundays to 2359. But let's say that we don't work on Saturdays or Sundays. We're going to remove Saturday and we're going to remove Sunday. And now, since I already have the configuration set to the time zone I'm currently in, I'll be able to specify that I'll be available from 8 in the more, or yes, from 8 in the morning to 5 in the afternoon. I'm going to set it like this for every day. And this way, I'll be available from 8 in the morning to 5 in the afternoon, Monday through Friday. And let's check our configuration. If we navigate to our official website, we can already clearly observe our prominent WhatsApp button. However, of course, it is important to keep in mind that I am currently physically located in Europe. So let's implement a small yet significant adjustment here to thoroughly test this specific availability. Let's consider, for instance, that I wish to display this particular contact number exclusively within the geographical boundaries of the United States of America. We save all of the changes, and if we then proceed to the website, we will clearly see that I can now no longer see the button. Now, if I proceed to update the button settings once more, and meticulously specify that, in addition to prominently displaying it within the United States, I also wish to have it clearly visible and accessible in Spain, which is precisely where I am currently located, I will then carefully save these new configurations, navigate directly to the live website, and there, I will be able to distinctly observe the WhatsApp button appearing once again, fully functional and ready for use. Now, if I make a change to the time zone, or rather, not so much the time zone as the availability, for example, today is Thursday, and let's say we're only going to be available in the afternoon, we'll be available from 15, that is from 3 o'clock, until 17, that is until 5 o'clock. Right now, it's 12 o'clock noon, so I'm going to save. Let's go back to the website, and now I can't see the button anymore. So as you can see, we can set availability either by geolocation, that is, by country, or I can also set it by time, or I can combine both. I'm going to reset this schedule. I'm going to set it so that, yes, I want it from 8 in the morning until 5 in the afternoon. I'm going to save, and I'm going to check that I can see the that I can see the button. And now what I'm going to do is click the button. I'm going to click on the WhatsApp button. It won't open for me because, well, there's no valid number since I didn't enter a valid number. Now I'm going to navigate to another section of the website, for example, here. I'm going to click again as well. I'm going to close it again because I have a number that's not a real number. And let's take a look at our list of numbers for a moment. And as you can see, we already have two clicks. But what else can we see? If we go to the analytics menu here, we'll find several options. For example, as you can see here, we have detailed information about the clicks that have been made on the WhatsApp button. Here we have the current date, which is when the click was made. Here we have the name of the WhatsApp number. Here we have the actual number. Here we have the IP address, which I won't show. Here we have the country from which the click was made. Here we have the name of the city where the visitor who clicked is located. And here we have the URLs from which the clicks were made. Then we also have more reports. We have reports by page, we have reports by country, we have reports by city, and we have reports by WhatsApp number. I'm just going to do a quick example here. I'm going to go to reports by city just as an example. And here, as we can clearly observe, there is the comprehensive report meticulously organized by city presented within a well-structured table or more precisely in the standard and familiar Odoo report format. Here we have, for example, the one specifically designed for the WhatsApp number. And what this particular feature allows us to do is to gain comprehensive and detailed information about precisely how our users are actively interacting with our button.